Hey, y'all. Look <laughs> what we're talking about today. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Two. Two. Yeah. Because we already did the first one. That's why you said y'all, right? Yeah. Yeah. Trying well. to take it. Trying to take it. <laughs> <laughs> trying to take it back to Texas. Trying to take you down to Texas yeah. for this one. I never, so, I'd never seen this movie. Yeah, you thought you'd seen I it, but I you thought, hadn't. I saw it and I was going, damn, why didn't I fucking see this movie back then? I would have liked it even more. I mean, I liked it. But it was kind of like Evil Dead 1 and 2, and it, the tone was right. Yeah. Skinny Puppy sampled the hell out of it in their fucking music and their songs, you know what I mean? And I, I, I had seen scenes, but yeah. I'd never seen the whole thing. I just thought I did. This movie is batshit crazy. Yeah. I remember the first time I saw this, I think I was at a slumber party and yeah. we rented it. I must have been 15 or so. And we rented it and we just thought we'd, we'd seen the first one, obviously. This one is much, much different than the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre, even though it was also directed by Toby Hooper. And I feel like less so nowadays, but I think when it first came out in 1986... I feel like it was real divisive, like among why. horror fans. Well, just because it's a completely different tone than the first movie. It's almost like a parody of the first movie. You know what I mean? And I think like some people didn't like that. I can kind of see what you're talking about, but it wasn't a parody of the first movie, say, in the way that, you know, Escape from L.A. was versus Escape from New York. <laughs> that, that went from fucking awesome to like, what the fuck is this <laughs> This here, it's the same tone that you saw with Evil Dead One and Two. Uh, you recognize it in, in modern term, in, in in the modern, I guess, what do you call it? In, in the modern gestalt, you'd probably say it was kind of like Devil's Rejects and House of a Thousand Corpses. You can really see where those, but those funnier and more over the top. Yeah, but you more know more ridiculous. You know I mean, what? I guess those are ridiculous too, but that's where Rob Zombie, I think, got the idea from because we were yeah. talking about Bill Mosley and stuff like that too. Yeah, later. but you know, here's the thing. I kind of like this tone in horror. I find it a lot more... Uh, That's why I'm amazed that you didn't see this yeah, back in the day. Because this is right up your alley. Right, I, I, <laughs> I like this tone a lot better. I think it's it, it makes the... Uh, I guess you could say you don't have to suspend your disbelief because the tone is not one of realism. Yeah. But it's also, to me, disturbing. In the way that yeah. a Thousand Corpses... Because they're kind of making fun of people's suffering and shit. Which yeah. I always find kind of real disturbing, you know. Devil's Rejects, House of a Thousand Corpses kind of had that same tone. When I first saw them, they were, it was very disturbing. So back in the day when this movie came out, I would have seen it. I would have thought it was kind of funny, but I have also would have been pretty disturbed by it. Like it would have stuck in the back of my mind. I would have been thinking about that. Damn, imagine if... Because the underground fucking lair underneath the, where, where all the cannibals live. Where and shit, the, the Sawyer way, family lives. Yeah, yeah, where all the skeletons and the shit that they were doing and everything underneath there. It was like something out of House of a Thousand Corpses. It, and even that movie kind of disturbed me for a while. Had well, as I said, you can tell Rob Zombie was yeah. like a huge, huge fan yeah. of this movie. Yeah. This, <laughs> because this is kind of where he got the, the tone from, I guess. Uh, you know, I liked the first one. Um, but I like the second one a lot better now that I've seen it. Uh, I think it's a better movie. I would not say that, but they're very different movies, like I said. Visually, it's a much better movie. It uh, looks cool. I really, really yeah. like like the whole production design of the underground yeah, layer. Yeah, the with underground all the, layer, the way everything looks. That's the, super cool. The edit, uh, the script, uh, the, the story, how it moves forward. I think it's a better movie. But, you know what I mean? It's, you know, cinema is, uh, you know, has a lot to do with subjective. the subjective, you know. The, to me, this is a lot better movie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's I I don't know I I like horror comedy because I would call this a horror comedy. This is like a black comedy, yeah. uh, essentially. Um, which in, in the way that a House of a Thousand Corpses is a horror comedy. Well, yeah. Well, I thought that was funny too. Yeah, I, it disturbed but in me, a, in though. a fucked up way. Yeah, it disturbed me. The fact that they were all that that you're supposed to think what they're doing is funny. Was yeah, what, and and they think it's funny. It shit ain't funny. You know what I mean? Not really. Well, you know? if, if if shit like that is done right, yeah, it kind of makes you, like, it's funny, but then it makes you feel bad, bad for thinking think it's, it's funny. funny. Exactly, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Yeah. This one kind of has a little bit of that, too. Yeah, they're keeping dead bodies around and stuff and fucking talking to dead bodies because they know the person. Just weird shit. <laughs> so, yeah. Wearing so, dead bodies. 
Yeah. yeah. So what ended up happening with this movie? Um, so Toby Hooper, as I said, very famously had done, um, you know, he'd done the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That kind of made his name in horror, even if he'd never made anything else. I mean, I'm sure that would just have cemented his legacy. He'd also done some other things like The Fun House, which we reviewed on there. Like that movie. So then he got a three picture deal with Canon Films. And if you know anything about 80s cinema, Canon Films, uh, Golan and Globus, very, very uh, famous for doing mostly action movies. They did like Sylvester Stallone shit, like Cobra, um, you know, a lot of the Chuck Norris movies, the, mis- the Missing in Action movies, like all those kind of movies. Yeah. So they gave Toby Hooper the, a three picture deal. So I think the first movie that he did was Life Force which we also did a movie retrospective on, and I fucking love Life Force, and I think it's really underrated. Space uh, vampires, you know. I liked Cobra. Yeah. At the time Cobra came out with 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 uh, Stallone, I thought it kind of sucked. Saw it again recently, and now it kind of aged well. Sometimes they're better, like, when you yeah, see them many years later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There wasn't a lot to it at the time, but you see it now, and he goes, no, it was kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so he makes Life Force. Um, it doesn't make any money. So then he did uh, he did the remake of Invaders from Mars, yeah. which actually That's I think good. I saw it back in the day. I don't I remember it being okay, but I don't remember it making much of an impression. Um, also, that one didn't do very well. So finally, for his third one, they're like, "Dude, um, please make a movie that'll make some money." So he's like, "I got an idea. I'm gonna do a sequel to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but I'm gonna go in a completely different direction than the original." And also, and make it kind of a parody or a comedy or something like that, because uh, he didn't want to do the same thing again. Um, and this one did end up making money, not that much. Uh, it only cost about four, four and a half million to make, and it made eight million. So I didn't. Not he, great, but it did make a little bit of a profit. I didn't know he made that Invaders from Mars. He did that yeah. remake. Yeah. I remembered liking it. I haven't seen it in a long time, so I can't really again. judge. I want to see it. I got to see it. Again. I remember seeing it, and I don't really remember much about it. But maybe if I saw it now, it would make like a bigger. I remember thinking it was just kind of had that cool kind of 80s vibe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kind of like an evil version of E.T. Yeah. An evil E.T. I mean, yeah. that's always kind of like a good. There, there was a kid involved and he knew about where the Martians were and they were taking over people's parents and stuff. And... Yeah, that's right. Okay, then, now it's kind of coming back. And then they had them. Now it's coming the, back. Yeah. And I'll the, have to watch that the again. The head Martian, I think, was inside. His head was inside a crystal ball or something or tentacles on it. Looking weird. Yeah, I kind of feel like I don't want to get it confused yeah. with Mars Attacks, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I think they were taking over. The, didn't they take over the dog too? They would turn people into like robots. I got to see that shit again, though. See, like I said, you might be you might be getting some stuff confused with Mars Attacks because I think I get because some of the imagery yeah. in it is kind of similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or at least that's how I'm I remember remembering. liking it back in the days, thinking it was a trip. They yeah. played it on HBO all the time. Yeah. So, uh, so finally, for Toby Hooper's last film for Canon, he decided to do this one. Now, as I said, this came out in 1986, and it was kind of, as I said, a little divisive among horror fans because I kind of feel like it had been such a long time since the original. Uh, you know, it had been like whoa, what was it, 12 years? Because I guess the original mm-hmm. came out in 74. And um, they're like, oh, well, we wanted it to be like more of the same. They wanted kind of because the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, obviously, you know, everyone's seen it, but it's kind of more like a documentary feel. It's much more realistic. Uh, Not much gore. All the gore was implied, even though people remember it being gory. This one, uh, much, much, much gorier, much gorier. Although, interestingly, as I said, I saw this when I was a teenager at a slumber party and I remember like sitting there and watching it with my friends and stuff. And we were just like, whoa, so gross and stuff like that. But watching it recently, I'm like, oh, it's not as gory as I remembered. Well, over, I'm just jaded, I guess. It's over the top gore. It's yeah. Kind of, it's kind of cartoonish. Cutting tops of people's heads off with chainsaws. And then, for, you know, and the person's still trying to drive cars. You know, it, I it, mean, it's gory, but it's not like. It's not believable. Yeah. It just looks cool. And Tom Savini did the yeah. did the effects. I, I think probably my favorite effect is that, like you said, like near the beginning where that guy gets the top of his head off while he's cut yeah. his cut off of the chains, always driving. The only the, the only gory part that I remembered was when uh Dennis Hopper, which we'll get into yeah. in this in a minute, when he kicks that the part of the wall out and then like all the guts fall out. Yeah. And also stretch wearing her friend's face. I remember yeah. that. But yeah, so this is like much, much gorier. So, uh, so yeah, so the story behind this one is that there's like an opening crawl at the beginning. So this is set 13 years after the events of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But I guess it's been covered up by the authorities. You know what I mean? Because, you know, at the end of the first movie, obviously Sally Hardesty escaped 
And so they were trying to keep it on the down low that there's like this roving family of cannibals like in Texas. Well, I guess. they couldn't find the house where she said it happened. Yeah, they just couldn't find because I guess yeah. they bugged out. Yeah. So the implication being that they've been kind of moving around Texas and the authorities like think they're almost like an urban legend at this point. So, um, however, the character of uh, Lefty, who is a he's a Texas Ranger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or something think, like that. Uh, yeah. He's played by Dennis Hopper. And he is supposed to be, I think, the uncle of Sally and Franklin from the first movie. Franklin, the, the killed, wheelchair yeah. guy. So he uh, knows that these cannibals are real, and he's like trying to find them. I had never seen this movie, and um, you know, I like Dennis Hopper, but I think this is one of Dennis Hopper's best roles. He he just plays a, a, a fun character, and he does crazy shit. I mean, he and leans into the yeah, crazy big he knows, time. he knows the shit's crazy. <laughs> He's just this Texas Ranger that's hell bent on fucking finding out what happened to his uh, his relatives <laughs> and to bring these damn cannibals to justice. And once he finds their lair and everything, man, it's fucking great. I'm he bringing can, it all down. I'm bringing it all down. He just basically <laughs> runs around all day cutting with his chainsaws. He's got a his outfit with all his chainsaws. And he's cutting down all the little metal. I'm the Lord of the Harvest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cuts down all the wooden, <laughs> all the wooden poles that uh, pillars that hold up this damn lair that they're in, and it's it's a visual sight. I think they they really, you know, what I mean, they took it to a new level. I was, love that lair. It wasn't a it's house. Massive. It was, a, it was an underground lair underneath an old roadside attraction. Yeah. Called what was it called? Texas Land or Texas Battle War? Battle Texas Battle Land Battle of, Battle, Battle Land of something Texas like or that. Some shit like that. <laughs> It's got all these big fake mountains and fucking it's got a cowboys and Indians fucking kind of a and and Mexican kind of a motif going on, you know, where it's all kind of coming together in a big old damn war, you know, and it's abandoned and they're living underneath it and they've got it all customized. Yeah, like in all these tunnels. And there was stuff. kind of like an element of water park, too, wasn't it? Cause a little bit. There were like a lot of shoots and shoot, stuff. Like I guess that. there was train tracks that went through those shoots at one time. The tracks. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. Because we were sitting there watching. Like, it. That looks like it was almost a real place. But yeah, I think it might have been a real place. I don't think they'd have built all that for a movie. You wouldn't think. I think it was an abandoned place, and I think the the train tracks to the roller coaster were gone. I'm not sure it was a roller coaster. I think what it was is it was something kind of like the like that ride in Disneyland, the Gold Rush. Where it was, sh it was shoots that filled with water, and you had the rafts going down. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what it was. I see something what you're like saying. that. Yeah. But yeah, so you have Dennis Hopper's character who kind of comes into this town and uh, you know chasing these people, and these people, the Sawyer family, it's pretty much the only um, member of you know the or the same actor is the guy that plays uh, you know like the dad character, whoever, um, you know the one with the uh, that makes the chili out yeah. of people's. Uh, you know, yeah, out, of, out of human meat, which is kind of like, kind of like Motel Hell, but kind of like know. Motel Hell, yeah. They, but they, Motel Hell ripped off the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, so you know, turnabouts fairly. Yeah, play. yeah, yeah that's, that's true. That's true. Yeah, they make side cash by selling damn human chili. Yeah, he, and he wins awards. He with. wins every year. Yeah, he wins wins awards. With. <laughs> and he he's the only fa member in the family that can kind of go out into public. The rest of them are all just too fucking freaky. Uh, <laughs> one dude, one, I think it's his son, right? The one with the metal plate in his head. Lucy, I'm not sure son. if it's supposed to be his. I oh, guess his it's nephew. his son or his nephew. Not or real clear. I think there's a bunch of inbreeding going on in the family too. Yeah, I guess maybe um, it could be his son and his nephew at the same yeah, time. Yeah, and he's the dude from House of Thousand Courses. And yeah, Bill Mosley. Yeah, that guy. Bill Mosley is that his name? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and he's real young in it. He's got this exposed metal plate that he got in Vietnam, and he's just fucked up, and uh, he's constantly itching and scratching and eating little pieces of his scalp. <laughs> and and uh, so something. And, he, and I think there was inbreeding before he fucking went to Vietnam, but he was trying to turn his amusement park into Vietnam land. Nom, nom land, land, nom that's, land, nom yeah. land. And that's what he said, <laughs> talking about going back to the VA to have his fucking plate replaced and there's all kinds of weird shit. Man. Well, he's supposed to be the twin brother of yeah. the hitchhiker from the original movie. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because interestingly, Bill Mosley... Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Bill Mosley, yeah, he got run over by a truck at the end. Okay. And actually, the body that he's carrying around with him is supposed to be the body of that guy. Okay. It's supposed to be the run over All right. hitchhiker. He's, he's run over twin. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they're carrying around their dead ancestors. Yeah. And some of them you can't figure, you, you find out they're not dead. They're actually alive, but they're sold. They don't move. 
<laughs> and that, well, well, like I said, that that was kind of that was kind of like the first movie where right. Grandpa came out and he was yeah, just yeah, they like look like corpses, but they're two hundred years old or yeah, whatever. I think in this one they said Grandpa was one hundred and thirty. They feed him all liquid diet from fucking human <laughs> human extract that keeps him alive. You in extract. like a, in like a state of near death. Yeah, and then uh, all kinds of and then you got Leatherface there and he's wearing another another fucking rotten preserved body on the front of him, so it's like somebody else is doing it i didn't really catch i don't i don't know if that was an ancestor who he was making it look like the ancestor was wielding the chainsaw i don't know it's like he had double disguises because yeah, he also was guy. wearing someone else's face yeah and then he was also wearing, wearing another body, body. Like on yeah. top of him. it was just so he's like doubly disguised yeah leather face thinking <laughs> Leatherface thinking. It's, unfortunately, they couldn't get Gunnar Hansen back to play Leatherface in this yeah. one. Um, so as I said, you know, so Bill Mosley, I was going to say how he got this role. This might have been his first movie role. Like, I think he was in a couple little movies before this, but this was like his first major one. He actually got this part. I think he didn't even have to audition for it because... Him and his, I think his wife or his girlfriend at the time, they had made a parody of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre called the Texas Chainsaw Manicure. Hmm. And he had played like a hitchhiker type character. And so when they wanted to redo the movie and they're like, okay, well, we're going to have like the twin brother of that guy, you play him. So it's kind of like channel that guy. Yeah. So that's how he ended up getting the part because he was in like a parody film of it that he had made, like a little independent one, you know? Yeah. But um, yeah, so you have that and then you have, so there's the three of them are kind of like the main deal. And like you said, like the dad dude, he's like the only one that goes out and he makes chili and whatnot. Now you also have the other main character being the radio DJ, Stretch. Yeah, she got some fantastic legs. <laughs> like I got to call her Stretch. She run around all day long with those legs stretched out and those cut off shorts. <laughs> That's what they're doing. I understand it. Yeah. I understand what they're what they're talking about. She yeah. gets involved because she's working at this little dinky ass radio station yeah. and there's these two at the very beginning, there's these two like kind of yuppie douchebags and they're driving into town because yeah. they're supposedly like this big football game, like a college football game or whatever. And they keep like calling her because they're listening to the radio and they keep calling her with their car phone. I was like, 1986. Yeah, car phone in 1986, you had to be super rich. That was like some pretty high tech shit. It was like a thousand dollars a month. And it was it wasn't cordless, obviously. No. It was just kind of, and it wasn't Had one of those big brick ones. But you it was like a radio a, transmitter in the damn vehicle. Yeah, yeah. To do it, so only like I super remember. high to high yeah. end yuppies. And it was like a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, it was some for the service. Yeah, ridiculous. Because not a lot of people had it. It was just like wealthy people. Just, just super rich people. Yeah. So they have, so they have a, that, and they're driving into town. They decide they're gonna call this poor radio DJ and like harass her. And it so happens that while they're on the phone harassing her. They um, get into the game of chicken, right, with a truck, which they don't know at the time, but contains members of the Sawyer family. And then later on that night, the, you know, the Sawyer family comes back and Leatherface is up on the roof wearing the face and wearing the other body. And yeah. he pretty much like chainsaws through the top of the car and cuts that dude's head off. And so Stretch gets the whole murder on tape. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the audio. Audio tape. Yeah. So, um... So that's, I think that's kind of what brings Dennis Hopper there because it looked like the, the cops are like, no, no, it was just an accident. And Dennis Hopper's like, yeah, I don't think you can chainsaw off your own head. Like, and then like that makes you crash your car. So him and Stretch kind of join forces to like go after. So it's pretty much the first half of the movie is the two of them getting together. And then you have Bill Mosley's character who kind of, who comes in there like uh, into the radio station and starts like harassing her and then kills or takes the um the other guy that works at the radio station right and like drags him back to the lair and then her and Dennis Hopper end up having to like you know chase them to the lair and then she gets trapped down there and running around and all this other kind of stuff so pretty much like the second half of the movie is down in the lair there's also another dinner scene they do another dinner scene pretty much exactly like the first movie yeah. but with her instead of I fucked up not seeing it. You did. This, like I said, yeah. this sounds exactly like something you would like. Yeah, I didn't know that I hadn't seen it. Nobody brought it up. I guess it. I guess it came out after I had gradu graduated from high school, so it wasn't one that we got at Blockbuster. Maybe. I mean, it's '86 that came I out. I know. Okay, then it would have been. For, maybe Blockbuster didn't carry it or something. Maybe. I, I don't. I never saw it. That's really yeah. It's like weird. I said, that seems like this seems exactly like one. Yeah, and the right time. The, the time frame was correct. Yeah. I should have seen it. But no, I never saw it. it For whatever good. reason, I hadn't seen this one, like I said, since I was a teenager. 
But for whatever reason, I was thinking that this was the one that had Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger in it, but it wasn't. That was the fourth one, I think. Like, Texas Chainsaw, The Next Generation or whatever. I put it right there with uh, the Evil Dead movies. Uh, I put it right there with the uh, Jeffrey Combs fucking Lovecraft movies. Um, Let me see what else. I put it right there with, uh, you know, like Hellraiser stuff. But, yeah. But, like, towards the top of that pile. Yeah, I mean, this yeah. one, it, it's super fun. Yeah. It's just a fun, gory... Like I said, if you want something that's more like the first one, kind of like that real serious, uh, you know, documentary tone. What, you know what I heard is that Toby Hooper, he wanted to make the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre more like this one. Yeah. I guess, like, that was his original vision for it, was it was right. supposed to be more like... He was uh, able to do it. ...a parody or more, like, funny. He yeah. wanted to make, like, a black comedy. And he still says that the original, well, he st- still doesn't say it now because he passed away, sadly. But um, he said for a long time that the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre had a lot of black comedy elements in it, which I guess it sort of does, but it doesn't translate as much, I guess, as this one. So this almost seems like this is what he wanted to do. If you don't know any of those old movies that we grew up with, but you like House of a Thousand Corpses and, um, and Devil's Rejects, this is like the prequels. It, it is like, kind of like that. Yeah, it feels like a prequel to that. Yeah, as I said, it's real over the top. It yeah. has like this real strange, like carnivalesque yeah. atmosphere. Like all the characters are just super ridiculous super and top, super yeah. over the top. Kept I mean, balding kind of tone. Yeah, and, and it's that. just you know, and everyone's just like screaming and like, yeah. you know what I mean. It's that kind of thing. Dennis Hopper. One of the funniest scenes in this for me, it just made me laugh and laugh, was the scene where Dennis Hopper goes to the chainsaw store. Which is funny because it's like a convenience store and then a chainsaw store because, you know, that's just how you do it. It's Texas. Um, And he buys three chainsaws without and there's like no talking like between him and the old guy that runs the the shop. But it's just like the I don't know, just like the edits and the facial expressions like between them. And like, I don't know, something about it like just really cracked me up. And it cracked me up that there's no dialogue in it, that he just comes in and buys these fucking three and then he goes out and just like goes ham on this fucking yeah. log out there or whatever. You know what's funny is you were saying that you think this is one of Dennis Miller, uh, Dennis Miller, Dennis Dennis Hopper's. Dennis Hopper's best roles. Um, it's funny because he said later, I don't know if he still uh, you know thought this uh, later, but he was just like he thought this was like the worst movie he'd ever de- done. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, you were in the Mario Brothers, like the Super Mario Brothers movie. Yeah. Like he played King Koopa, right, with John Leguizamo. Um, I was like, I think that might be <laughs> the worst movie you're in. Wonder why but, you would uh, think this is the worst movie. I don't know. It's it's just funny because it stands it, out. It really does, yeah. and it's almost kind of like you know Frank Booth and uh, Blue Velvet, which you know another yeah. kind of role that he played. It, this one, he's kind of like that in this yeah. one. Yeah. He just like plays a completely crazy person. I don't think he really understood the tone. Maybe not. I don't know. A lot of people didn't respect horror at the time. That's true. It was the 80s. And, you know, he was in he was in Apocalypse Now. He was in a lot of great fucking movies. So maybe in comparison to some of the great movies, this was not a highbrow movie. But in terms of its genre, this is a great movie. Yeah. Like this is a great movie. I mean, if you love like 80s shit, like Return of the Living Dead or, you know, the Evil Dead. It's just these just over the top, crazy, fun, wacky, gory. The movie is exactly what it's supposed to be. I can tell that there's no mistakes in the movie. This is what they wanted. And I I agree with all the decisions, all the creative decisions, everything in the damn editing, the dialogue, the fucking score and the soundtrack of the music. Oh, the soundtrack to this. I'm glad you mentioned that because I really wanted to mention that. The soundtrack for this kicks ass. Yeah. I put it up there with like uh, horror masterpieces with like, you know, House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects. I mean, this could be the prequel. You could really see that those two movies were in a way kind of like, not knockoffs, but a continuations of this theme and this tone. Yeah, it's you pretty know. much exactly that. So that's the prequel. Yeah. You know, if you like those movies and you didn't, see, you never seen this one, go back and watch this. You'll love it. You'll you'll see where all that stuff came from. You know, Doc, what's his name? Dr. Satan. Remember what's yeah, his name? Dr. Yeah, yeah. Satan. And all, and there's all <laughs> kinds of shit like that in there. Just surprise characters that come out of nowhere. You're like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of what the fuck of, that I just watched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this movie. And particularly the very, very famous scene of Leatherface um kind of putting the chainsaw into Stretch's crotch while she's yeah. just 
while she's trying to like convince him that she's not. Like, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> You're not mad at me. You're not yeah, mad yeah, at yeah, me. Yeah. That was a great scene. <laughs> I was so fucking well, funny. that was playing right into Isn't that weird. That was playing right into the tropes of the time. Yeah. When we were renting this kind, these kind of movies back in high school, it was about over the top, fucking wacky violence, horror that made you uncomfortable and sex, 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 really just sexy ass women. Yeah. That was kind of like the girl from, what was her name? Lorena, uh, she always, what was that? What, what's that? Uh, okay. The girl from, uh, from beyond once she's nearly got getting fucking naked. Oh yeah. 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 What's that you. girl's name? I gotcha. Yeah. I can't. I well, can't remember her name. I can't remember. Loren- L- no, no, Quigley? no, no, no. Okay. Linnea Quigley was in Sorority Babes. She was, in the yeah, and she was also in uh, Night, Night of the, of the Living, Demons. Night, and then what is it? Return of the Living Dead, or was it? Yeah, she was in Return of the Return of the Living Dead. Yeah, yeah she, she was, was in the punk. You, you always were going to see something, somebody like that in it in the movie. Yeah, so we expected to see that. And this character, she never gets nude, but she's she kind of had to fulfill that trope. Of the sexy da- damsel in distress who makes it. Although she she's pretty it. kick-ass in this She's one. kick-ass, yeah. Yeah. She's not, she's I mean, in she's, distress, but she fights back. She holds her own. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's not yeah. just, she doesn't just sit there screaming. Well, she gets captured a couple times. Yeah. But she gets out. Yeah. So she is a damsel in distress. She is waiting for a dude to save her. But he never saved her. No, he didn't. She said she He had his own her. agenda. She saved herself. <laughs> so... And he just went, yeah. went off in La La Land. So, he yeah. was just like, you know what I mean? Hit Dennis Hopper. I mean, how many times are you going to say that this movie is the only movie in creation yeah. that has Dennis Hopper with three chainsaws yeah. with, in a chainsaw yeah. duel with Leatherface? Yeah. I mean, come on. So she did fulfill the damsel in distress role. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But the thing is, is that she ended up saving herself. Yeah. All right. And, and that, which I guess you could say... Was not really a. That was also a common trope even back in these days. Like you hear people today saying, "Oh, the, those old movies. They were, you know, they were so sexist. The women were not empowered. No, they were always empowered. Well, were, I think they were that, always saving themselves. That first started in the eighties, actually, yeah, in the flash uh, movies. Uh, yeah, I, I do kind of feel like fifties so wasn't like that. No, fifties yeah. and sixties uh, well, horror late, movies, late not 60s, that much. You started to see some of that though. A little bit. I spit on a your little grave. Bit. What, what, that was that what, was 71? that was early seventies. Okay, that was 72, 73. Okay. Um. Yeah. That. Well. That's like the whole. Yeah. The whole rape revenge yeah. genre. Yeah. He was, you know, there were there were you know examples of it, but I do kind of feel like I feel like the whole because the whole final go- girl trope and everything like that that sort of came into its own in the eighties. I feel like yeah. maybe late seven. Well, I guess late seventies because yeah, had like well, Halloween and in stuff. our lifetimes the women always did well. They. They yeah, people were trying to save them, but they in the end kind of saved themselves. I yeah, because fact, I mean yeah, they they the had guys to got be killed. they had to be yeah. Uh, resourceful. Yeah, usually what would happen that was like a success a, an acceptable storyline uh, to a teenage boy who was the marketing that that was you know is that the guy who he can identify with is trying to save her through the whole thing. But he can't get to her. He finally is able to get to her. They're together for a little bit, but then he dies defending her, and then she get then she gets away. Yeah. Or then she ends up saving herself. Yeah. And then, like, you know, on Friday the 13th, then Jason comes up out of the water and grabs her. But you don't know, <laughs> but you don't know if it really <laughs> happened. Yeah, but you don't know if it really happened. You know? Because who was, what about the little boy? You know, that kind of shit. So you don't know if it really happened. Yeah, don't worry too much about continuity yeah, with Friday yeah, yeah. the 13th movies. And honestly, right. don't worry too much about continuity with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre no. movies either. Because especially after this one, this one does have ties in. Like, it's supposed they're supposed to be relatives of... You know the victims and the family from the first one, and they do have some. But after this, it just went what they just went whatever. They just just kind of like, oh, we're gonna reboot it, or oh, this is like in the. They just like fucking went off in its own direction. I wanted to say too when we were talking about the uh, the soundtrack, is I had forgotten how fucking rad the soundtrack for this was. Yeah. It has uh, the Cramps. Yeah. It has Lords of the New Church. Yeah. It has Oingo Boingo. Yeah. Uh, it had Concrete Blonde. Yeah. yeah. Um, just all kind of like Rocky Erickson, all yeah. kind of really, really cool shit. In this and movie. then just the score, the, the musical that too. score was just real good. And all, and all the, the audio cues, the soundscapes of it, it was all, it was all good. The lighting was fucking really good. Set design, super good. Um, I loved all the Christmas lights yeah. with all the, cause they had all the dead body shit. Like, but it was, yeah. but there was, uh, it was like a massive, massive area. You know what I mean? That they had to decorate. Well, even outside the lair too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but up on the surface, it looked great. Uh, 
the nighttime shots, just everything, the outdoor shots, everything was good. The shots of the, uh, of the radio station looked great. The old neon, neon fucking, um, neon clocks and stuff in the inside, you know, and it was just kind of uh, nostalgic to see all that. And then they had, uh, what is it? Remember how they had all the, uh, shelves and shelves of record albums? Yeah. When's the last time you've seen that? I know that was pretty, that yeah. was pretty cool. It brought a yeah. lot of shit back. And how much, how much room all that stuff took up. Yeah. The whole building was taken up with record albums. You don't see that anymore. Yeah. You keep that on MP3 player now. Yeah. Back and in the old back days. Back in the old days, you had to have all that physical space. For yeah. Everything. You know, what's funny to me is that when this movie first came out in 86, um, they were going to, the MPA wanted to give an X rating because it was too gory. But uh, Toby Hooper said, no, I'm not going to cut anything. So they released it unrated. It's just funny. Maybe watch that's why I couldn't get it at damn Maybe. blockbuster. Maybe. Probably. Yeah, they wouldn't do anything that was unrated. Yeah. They wouldn't rent anything what that was. was unrated. That's why we never saw it. I mean, we saw it because we didn't rent it from Blockbuster. Okay. We rented it from somewhere else, like a mom and pop place. But um, yeah, that would that would probably explain it, why you didn't see it. Yeah. Because they didn't, you know, they, they would have had to cut it, which is like really funny because if you watch it nowadays, not much it's good. gory, but it's yeah. not, I mean, we've... Nowadays we've seen way fucking worse. Yeah, and back in the day, <laughs> back in the day, you know, we didn't have internet, so we would have probably known that there was a che Texas Chainsaw Massacre too, but that wouldn't have meant anything to us. Yeah, because the first one was just it was okay, but you didn't have to see the second one. You know what I mean? So it wasn't yeah. a cultural phenomenon back then. We didn't even know about it. Yeah, I don't remember even talking about it. Well, as I said, Had we know we'd have watched the shit out of it. Yeah, we, we, we would have liked it. Yeah. It did okay at the box office. Like it made a profit unlike the other two movies that Toby Hooper had made for canon, but it didn't make a shit ton of money. I feel like it only got, um, it got a cult following later, like after it came out on video. Like right. a lot of people didn't go see it at the theater, like didn't bother. Because like I said, it had been such a long time since the first one had come out. So I kind of feel like people were just like, man, we don't need more of that. But um, yeah, so I feel like as time went on, as I said, it, when it first came out, it was real like some horror fans were like, oh, they didn't like it because it's just like completely, completely different than the first one. But then that but then there was like the other half of horror fans were like, no, that's exactly why we like it, because Toby Hooper decided to just go in a completely different direction instead of retreading the same stuff. And I feel like appreciation for it has kind of grown over the years. I tell you what, I, I can guarantee you, had we seen trailers for it, we would have wanted to see it. We would have found it. But yeah. we just weren't really aware of it. I mean, we I, I can I can remember that we knew it existed, but that didn't mean anything to us. Yeah, that's true. There were other movies to watch. If we didn't we just rented the ones that we would find. Yeah. At the at the at the uh at Blockbuster or any of the other rental places. And I guess like I guess because it was unrated, they wouldn't they yeah, wouldn't fucking if, show. If it I'm to remembering us. correctly, Blockbuster wouldn't rent anything that was unrated. Or NC seventeen or anything like that. They would do R, obviously, but nothing like wor like worse than that. Hmm. If you wanted something unrated or NC seventeen, yeah, get weird. someplace else and get it. That's weird because well, it's just kind of like Walmart wouldn't sell them if it was over an R. That's weird because uh, we we rented from Beyond, and we rented you know what I mean, and that had that was pretty wild. I would guess that was would, an R though. That was an R. Yeah. I don't really see the difference between this and that in terms of... That's what I mean. In hindsight, yeah. you know, yeah, this movie's gory, but it it's really, not... Not really that big that of a deal. Gory. I mean, yeah. compared to some other shit, compared to something like that came out... Let's compare it to something that came out in the 80s, like Dead Alive. This is way not as gory well, as Dead what Alive. Was, what was weird about that time is that you could get around those ratings. And maybe I'm just not really remembering how things were shot. Like you could you could pull tricks instead of making the blood red, you made it green, and you could do anything you wanted as long as it was green. Yeah. And I think a lot. I think a Which lot of movies so, so fucking funny. stupid. I know. And a lot of movies it's so arbitrary. A lot of movies were able to get those R ratings by using blood that wasn't the right color. Well, it's green because that's a zombie. Yeah. Or that's it's a zombie, or it's an alien, or it's something. A it's, a, it's 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 a demon. So yeah. Blood's gonna be green. <laughs> or that person was possessed by the demon, so the blue the the, the blood's blue or it's black. Yeah. So that's how it got around a lot of that shit. But you didn't notice it. Right. Because that's just some technical detail that you didn't, you know, the impression was still the same. Yeah. Head got cut off, the fucking blood went flying. The blood was black, but you didn't even really hardly notice it. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of feel like, well, Tom so. Savini, who did the effects on this, if I didn't mention it, I do kind of feel like he kind of ran into this problem a lot because, you know, Tom Savini 
was in Nam. He was a foot f- photographer in Nam, so he would have to go around and take pictures of all the dead bodies and everything. So uh, he got very well known for his special effects being super realistic. And so I think that that got him into a lot of... So they ended up cutting a lot of his yeah. effects just because they looked too real. I'd have to go back and look at those those uh, Lovecraft movies. And how much you want to bet that a lot of times that the blood was off color? Yeah, or maybe because that was around. more in a fantasy. Yeah, it's more of a fantasy. Base, because I feel like you can get away with more yeah, if you're doing something in a, in a fantastical right. setting. So maybe that's how they got around it and we just didn't really notice it. Because I remember the gore being about the same. Yeah. But they must have been playing on some kind of... But as I said, this was more like realistic. Yeah. It was like realistic looking corpses. You know, there's one yeah. scene where Dennis Hopper shoves the chainsaw all the way through Leatherface's stomach. Yeah. You know, there's just like, there's a the, whole big thing full of... Um, you know, at one point, uh, Leatherface peels all the, the skin off of um, the other guy that works at the radio station, peels his face off, yeah. and then he's kind of like fallen in love with Stretch, I guess. Yeah. So he's attempting to disguise her. This is he's just, get he's yeah. just like, here, put this face on. She's like, oh, yeah. please, please don't yeah, put yeah. my best friend's face out of my face. That's so nasty. Yeah. But he was just like trying to be nice because he, he thought that was going to hide her. And I was like, oh, that's so sad. <laughs> like putting the face on the cowboy hat. And then I like that he that the skin dude is like still alive. And then um, I, one, I, I love that his last words are, oh, shit. <laughs> and yeah. then he dies and then she puts his face back on him like and it looks so bad and it's just kind of like it's cool there, there you go yeah but this, like is, it. this is a really really fun movie this is definitely like you know get a pizza get some beers get some of your buddies to come over it's on shutter at the moment and i think it also cool. might be on pluto tv for free or tubi or something but uh shutter just added it not too long ago and i was very excited because i've been wanting to do this for a really long time and i thought you had seen it no because it definitely is something that it's you one of the would best like. movies of that era yeah definitely something that you would like but one yeah of the best horror movies of that era if you just love yeah. like gory over the top yeah. just crazy funny batshit crazy stuff then yeah you definitely need to see this like i said it's nothing like the first movie so don't expect it to be but it's super fun nonetheless so uh yeah check it out all right so that'll do it for this discussion we will see you on the next one bye